certainty. It is then we stand upon God's unchanging word. In times when everything seems to be changing, it is then we hold on to the hand of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he who remains the same yesterday and today and forever. We turn our hearts now to the Word of God to glean our wisdom from his holy word today. Our scripture comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 61st chapter, beginning with verse 1. Hear the word of God. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Let us enter into the presence of God. Let us pray. Great God, uh, we thank you so much for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He who opened this scroll from Isaiah and read it as the prophetic reality of his ministry here on earth. O oh, Father God, come to us all of us have experienced losses and we grieve. Lord, in March, everything changed and we grieve the loss of all that had been. And so, Father, come to us now. Remind us that you are at work in every situation and that you intend, Father, through your great love to grant us a crown of beauty instead of ashes, a new hope, a new spirit, a new love through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless now your word with your spirit, in the strong and the powerful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes is a spiritual principle that we have as Christians. Ashes always signify in the Bible sadness, grief, mourning, uh, repentance. You know, as in putting on sackcloth and ashes in order to repent, to return to the one true and living God. It is so heartfelt 
that often a person would lie prostrate in the dust in mourning or repentance. But the spiritual principle is this. God is always able to take the ashes of our lives and turn something, even something ugly, into something beautiful. Are you ready to exchange your ashes for something beautiful today. Now, to be honest, I've been grieving for my parents over the last couple of years. Uh, it seemed to me in a way that they were both taken away and in such rapid succession and there and then my life as I had known it was radically changed and forever. You know, and if I'm honest, uh, I was grieving not only the loss of my parents, but also the loss of my own life in a way that, uh, as I had known it to be for 64 years. But over time, as I've continued to trust in the Lord, as I've prayed to Him, I've come to love and appreciate my parents more not less. I find myself thinking about them and they continue to speak through their words and their example and their values that they always sought to model for me. I'm becoming more like them, not less. I'm taking on more of their attributes, seeking to lead my life more and more in a way that would please them and of course the Lord God Almighty also. I remember things they did or things they said and I write them down in my journal and there were, you know, frankly there were times when I couldn't even utter a sentence in prayer. I was so disconsolate. But they would continue to speak into my life. Though dead, yet still they speaketh saith the Lord. Proverbs 6.22 says, My son, keep your father's commandments and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. Exactly, I've come to realize my parents still watch over me, still are speaking to me, still are leading me. But perhaps more importantly, I've come to realize the Lord never leaves us in our grief, never allows us to stay with our face in the dust, never abandons us to our ashes but that he exchanges beauty for ashes. And each day in our heart, there are fewer ashes and more beauty. There's the spiritual principle. He takes away the ashes and exchanges them and gives us beauty. That's how and why we can trust in the Lord. So when the prophet Isaiah declares that the Lord will give us a crown of beauty instead of ashes, that's just exactly what he means. The Lord God Almighty promises he will give us beauty for ashes. Now, right now, you know, I mean, a lot of things are ashes. COVID-19 has taken a lot of things away. It's claimed lives too soon and often 
those who are the most vulnerable. It's isolated us from one another. It's taken away our jobs. People are hurting, unemployed. It's taken away our sense of security. It has turned our world into a scary place. Ashes upon ashes upon ashes. You know, and just sort of like losing a loved one, we are grieving our losses. We've put on our sackcloth and ashes, only now it comes as face masks and hand sanitizer. And we've had nothing but ashes for two and a half months. In a way, it's taken away our lives as we knew them to be. It's taken its toll. People are grieving those losses. There is stress and loss and grief. It's real. And we have to suffer apart from one another. Less sharing of our burdens. Less being around friends and loved ones. Two and one half months of ashes upon ashes upon ashes. So can we believe that God can take these ashes and turn them into something beautiful? Can we believe that our isolation can be turned into a profound desire to return and to be back together as the body of Christ, worshiping and fellowshipping together in joy? Can we believe that God will provide jobs where they have been lost? Can we believe that people who've lost loved ones can be comforted? Can we believe that God will give us hope where there seems to be no hope? Can he pour out his Holy Spirit in new and powerful and profound ways? Can we believe that God can and will and has placed strong hedges of protection around our families and all those whom we love? I believe he can. Because everything about the Lord God is that he delights in giving beauty for ashes. Do you believe this? Can you have hope today? You know, and there are some other ashes as well, may I say. I'm, I'm sure that we have all recoiled in horror at some of the most recent events unfolding up in Minneapolis. You know. To watch the video of the officer snuffing out the life and breath of that man, I can't breathe. A plea unanswered. Oh, and I want to be clear, we must never paint all police officers with the same broad brush. Every officer I have ever known over all of my life is a person of integrity who seeks to serve by putting their own lives on the line every day. But we have to admit that what happened in Minneapolis was ugly and brutal and ashes. And then there were protests, pe peaceful protests at first. Protests that we honor as Americans as an expression which we enshrine as a God-given right. But alas, certain forces of evil, present for evil purposes and not for good, hijacked some of those protests. These 
outside agitators garbed in black and with black face masks and black backpacks and throwing rocks and Molotov cocktails have reduced so many neighborhoods in so many cities to burned out shells of their former self. The evil came and twisted something that was good and turned whole city blocks into smoking wasteland, ashes. I've been grieving for my country over the past few days. This is not the country I know and love. So I'm personally experiencing it as loss and grief. But as Christians, do we believe that this is the end of the story? Or do we believe that love conquers hate? Do we believe that God's Spirit can bring unity where there has been sown division? Do we believe that in Christ, as the Bible says, there's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, there's not black nor white nor brown? Do we believe that there is an inherent power in God to bring reconciliation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do we believe that Jesus can intervene? Do we believe that God can bring beauty where there has been ashes? Do we believe as Christians, as we bid the nation to return to God through Christ, that we can replace evil with good, that God can do this? Do we believe that God wants and is fully capable of bringing beauty for all the ashes in this world. There was nothing more ugly than what happened to the Lord Jesus on that first Good Friday. My beautiful Savior. The Son of God who had preached love was repaid by his creation with evil by nailing him to an ugly ugly, ugly cross. Ashes, ashes everywhere that first Good Friday. But that was not the end of God's story. Because in three days, he raised up this same Jesus, his only begotten, his beloved son. God raised him from the dead to life. And in that raising has promised us that he will raise us up out of the ashes of death and evil as well. The movement of Good Friday to Easter from cross to open grave is the movement of God in the world right now as I speak. God took the ugliness of the cross and turned it into something beautiful. He gave us beauty for ashes.
in Jesus. Our Lord who decisively defeated evil and death and every bit of ashes by his great heart of love. God's story over and over and over and over again, Old Testament, New Testament, on practically every page in Scripture, God always gives us beauty for ashes. And therein lies our perpetual hope. You know, that's why as Christians we are a people of hope. You know, no television cable show image can take away our hope that we always have in a living, active, loving, present Savior. No naysayer expert can take away our hope. We have a hope in Jesus that will never, ever disappoint us. So, you know, we may approach all of life, everything in life, the good and the bad, everything in life as inherent optimists that we are meant to be. Because we know and we trust and we believe that even on the worst day, God is at work turning ashes into something beautiful. Do you believe that God gives us beauty for ashes? I do. So let us approach everything, everything, everything in life as the inherent optimists we have been called to be. Thank you, Lord, that you have sent Jesus to remind us you always give us beauty for ashes. Amen and amen.